If you want the moon, do not hide from the night. If you want a rose, do not run from the thorns. If you want love, do not run from yourself. Choosing the first novel of Elif Shafak to speak about on this channel was not an easy task. And we shall meet again for her other novels, as she is very dear and near to my heart. But for today, a journey of spirit, a discovery of another history of Rumi and Shams of Tabriz, in the 40 Rules of Love. Two parallel stories, eight centuries apart, like an introduction to Sufism, as Ella, a quiet wife and mother in the United States, learns about the companionship of two great mystics of the 13th century, Shams of Tabriz and Rumi. On a full moon night, the darkness doesn't frighten me. I feel at one with the discreet hum of the nightly mysteries that surround me. The inner feeling that moments like this are reality gives me shivers down my spine. I feel a soft smile on my face for no reason whatsoever. Number one, the constant change in perspective. From a technical point of view, I appreciate the way we are led to see the context through different eyes by giving a voice to many secondary or passing through characters. This gives a nice tempo to the story, making it dynamic and always new. We are allowed a privileged overview not only of the historic situation of the 13th century Middle East, but also a better understanding of the mystical and fascinating Shams of Tabriz. Number 2. The Soul-Searching Affair We are taught that for the matters of the soul, we should seek spiritual guidance from organized religion. Let's say we do that. How many of us have felt that the priest or imam or monk in front of us could never understand what we are going through, could never understand the doubts we have, even with regards to the existence of a deity and its role in our life. What Rumi's story told by Elif Shafak teaches us is that sometimes, even those whose job it is to know the answers are stuck in doubt or hesitance they too can have that intuition that it's more than just rules and dogma, and to be able to admit it takes a lot of courage. So let's not lose hope, and believe that we can have a personal and outside-the-box soul-searching experience, or even a lifetime of it. Number 3. Redefining Love isn't it strange that in a world where every religion has its own way of expressing the same universal truth, that love is at the center of our humanity, 
most of us still see love as the romantic feeling between two people. Is it because we were told too many times about the concept of love from ancient and outdated books? Or maybe our survival instinct has taught us to become impervious to all the people and things that do not concern us in a direct way. The novel has been out for 12 years already, and in that lapse of time, the idea we are all connected to each other has gained some audience. But I feel we need to constantly come back to the words that Elif Shafak has gifted to Shams of Tabriz. Intellect and love are made of two different materials. Intellect ties people in knots and risks nothing, but love dissolves all tangles and risks everything. Intellect is always cautious and advises, beware too much ecstasy. Whereas love says, oh, never mind. Take the plunge. Intellect does not easily break down, whereas love can effortlessly reduce itself to rubble. But treasures are hidden amongst ruins. A broken heart hides treasures. Do I choose Rumi for having the power to question his beliefs? Do I choose Ella for trusting that her life should have more meaning? I think that in the end, Shams is the one that speaks to me the most. His laws are beautifully put, his life philosophy impeccable. But what really got to me was that he had the courage of his convictions. He was a special soul that could not conform to the rules of society, and he accepted it instead of making it a lifetime struggle. Right at the beginning, he confesses, When I was a child, I saw God, I saw angels. I watched the mysteries of higher and lower worlds. I thought all men saw the same. At last I realized that they did not see. And later on, he gives us a solution for living in peace with this world, however different we might be. Instead of intrusion or passivity, may I suggest submission? Some people make the mistake of confusing submission with weakness, whereas it is anything but. Submission is a form of peaceful acceptance of the terms of the universe, including the things we are currently unable to change or comprehend. A clear and most definite yin novel. The 40 Rules of Love has that quiet, interior quality to it. As if from stillness, our intuition will fulfill all our needs. A rounded story with delicate conclusions and eternal values. East, West, South or North makes little difference. No matter what your destination, just be sure to make every journey a journey within. If you travel within, you'll travel the whole wide world and beyond.
choosing one life lesson from such a novel, I would say it's impossible. But still, if I had to choose, I think the message of hope is the most valuable to me. So often we see despair take over the sensitive souls among us, overwhelmed by the hardships of life. The idea that whatever happens, we will get through and that the light will always return is precious to me. In the words of Elif Shafak, Whatever happens in your life, no matter how troubling things may seem, do not enter the neighborhood of despair. Even when all doors remain closed, God will open up a new path only for you. Be thankful. It is easy to be thankful when all is well. A Sufi or light worker is thankful not only for what he has been given, but also for what he has been denied. If you need a dash of spiritual mystery in your life, you found your book. If you have trouble with the concept of God, you found your book. If you like good literature, you found your book. Elif Shafak's books have a certain delicate quality to them, touching on intimate subjects in various realms. We will return to her universe, but I hope that in the meantime, your curiosity has been picked by the 40 rules of love. Until next time, enjoy your reading.